there are absolutely enduring principles to the work that we do. Gary and Jean's vision. There'll be somewhere to put your, your coat down. Continues to guide us today. So he just wants to know if we still want to go in front of the judge. So the whole idea was being in low-income communities. One of my good friends said, Gary Bell is coming here. I said, who's he? He said, oh, he's Mr. Legal Services. Everybody wants to be like him. Reception area right there. We needed a copier. And the guy came to deliver it, and he said, I'm supposed to be delivering this to Harvard. I'm not leaving this here. And he took the Xerox machine and took it back. You know, you might be in a law school class and think that you have the most brilliant argument in legal history, and then you get to the Legal Service Center and the client says, I've already tried that before, uh, and I think you need to move it around a bit. And being able to be humble and receptive and, and doing what's best for your client. You're actually starting to make that cut in a surgery. What I was planning on doing for today is just giving And you you've got to figure out what to do when you've got to help. Being in it is so much more interesting than reading appellate cases. Mr. Lynch is a Vietnam veteran because of Agent Orange. He's in constant pain. He does. I used to mess the only thing. Every couple hours, in order to keep the pain at a manageable level, he has to dip his legs in buckets of ice. Students choose to be here. They want to serve others. They want to learn about this area of law. So they come ready and willing to embrace the work that we're doing. Because of the symptoms of post-traumatic stress that Mr. Lynch was experiencing, he was processed out with an other than honorable discharge. When Mr. Lynch went to the VA, they told him that they couldn't help him. They're interviewing clients, they're drafting documents, they're in court. And the idea is that they'll get enough variety of cases that they literally can do everything. We have five clinics at the Legal Services Center and they focus on housing law, predatory lending, tax law, family law, domestic violence, and veterans law and disability benefits. Some of our advocacy in very strategic ways is undertaken at a national level. Former students here have come back to the center in order to launch their project with the support of a fellowship. I came to law school to work on racial justice issues. I had the good luck to be a student in the clinic here working on predatory subprime mortgage litigation. That was the model for the work that I wanted to do. Actually used bankruptcy law to their advantage. For-profit colleges have been ripping off students for at least as long as there's been federal money flowing into higher education. That's really outrageous, and I think that outrage is really motivating. ITT Technical Institutes is permanently shutting down. One of the things that I learned in being a student here is that you can provide legal services in a way that really helps a lot of people, not just a few people, and in doing that, attack the fundamental unfairness of what our clients are up against. Our housing clinic, our lawyers, our students, provide a very, very powerful force to fight against gentrification, exploitation, and economic injustice. How long have you been in your apartment? 40 years. 40 years. Maureen McDonough from the Legal Services Center in Jamaica Plain. I mean, one party has all of the power and one party doesn't. Okay, so I have seven interrogatories and one document request. Do not sign any agreement if you don't understand what you are agreeing to do. The atmosphere that we wanted to develop in the office, and I think that to a large extent we did, was everyone cared, or that Gary cared, or that I cared, what you did and how you did. Um, regarding repairs on various conditions of disrepair, but if they don't exist, then <laughs> if they don't, if they don't exist, that you could always do better than what you were doing. Hi, Therese, it's Annie calling from the Legal Services Center. We're nimble, we're flexible, we're open to change. It's the way we practice. You know, a lot of the time, you know, you go in there with your plan, you want to figure this out and get this information from your client to help build your case. I mean, that's what you're thinking about in law school, right? Your, your legal strategy, what arguments you're going to make. But, you know, I, I think I spend about half my time in these interviews just sitting there and being like, I hear your story. 
That was in uh, May and June of 1969. Dr. Oh was uh, totally surrounded. Could have annihilated us any time they wanted to. They gave out 200 of them patches and I got one. And we were the people who were there. I was hoping that 40, 50 years after Vietnam, we would have taken care of our veterans from that war. The one group that everyone agrees on is still not getting the help that they need. This kind of points to larger problems in our, how we organize our society and, and how we allocate our resources. Especially the one out curriculum, you're reading these cases. The judges summarize the facts really neatly for you. All of these stories that we're reading about happened to real people. This clinic really connects you to that. I would recommend this place to, to anybody who is a veteran. I feel incredibly privileged to get to do what I do. There are days when people trust us with secrets that they haven't even told their closest family members. Um, but I'm incredibly privileged to get to be here. Like the teaching hospital. This is the people who had to fight every day to make a living and for whom the law has never been particularly open. In 10 years when I look back at law school, I'll say that this is the most meaningful thing I did. You know, not learning about this constitutional doctrine, but being able to say, like, look, these are real people who really served, made real sacrifices for our country, and I had the chance to, to help them when they needed it. We've been really good at um, making adjustments and kind of, you know, jigging and jogging as we need to, depending on what the needs are, and um, really maintaining a, a, a vibrant learning environment for our students and meeting the needs of the community. It doesn't get better than that.